Hello, welcome to Zemory Design. Let's repurpose those baby clothes into a beautiful, memorable wall hanging. So let's get started. Gather all those memorable baby clothes and sort through the ones you like. These are the ones I'm going to use. I'm also going to include the socks. So I'm going to determine the size square that I'm going to cut. I'm going to look, a, look at a three and a half inch square or a four and a half inch square. I'm going to choose the, four, the three and a half inch square. I realize that some of the items I'm going to cut off some of the embroidery designs, but that's okay with me. So I'm going to back everything with a medium weight fusible interfacing and I'll cut my fusible interfacing three and a half inches square first and then I will fuse that to the back of each of the items before I cut them. So some of the items I can get more than one square which will work with fine so I can applique the socks onto them. I'm going to disassemble the clothes, even the sleeves, and get squares out of those. So I'm going to leave all of the ruffles in this uh, little bottom ruffle that I have here from the shorts, and I'm going to fuse the interfacing to the back. And I'm just marking where that little bow is so I can make sure to get it in the middle of the fusible interfacing and just following the manufacturer's instruction, just fuse that on. I'm going to pin it in place until I can get it to the um, ironing board. I'm going to disassemble the bottoms and I'll be able to get a few squares out of each of those, the front and the back. And I will press this so that it lies flat and then fuse the interfacing, making sure that I have the rough side of the interfacing onto the wrong side of the fabric. Looking at this little band here, you can put a bow on that and have a little head bow. But I'm not doing that right now. I'm focusing on making this quilt. So now that I have everything all pressed out and I have my fusible on there, I'm going to cut along my fusible and cut out my squares. And I will do that for each of my items. Some of these items have made from t-shirt fabric like this one. So that's why I'm going to fuse before cutting. Now this is a way so that you can mark it. Now this I can see on the wrong side of the fabric. I'm able to still see the embroidery. So I'll know how to place that fusible. And once again I'll get several out of there. Out of this item. including cutting the sleeves off and cutting up the, the seam of the sleeve. Attaching the fusible first makes it really easy to handle these, uh, the fabric.
Now some of the plain sections of that part I will uh, hand applique uh, the socks on there. Now if I was using the four and a half inch square the sock would fit fine. But since these are three and a half inches square they're going to have some overhang. And that's okay with me. I'll just trim it later. So I'm just going to uh, pin baste it in place and then hand applique it later. Now if you have an, an item and you have some print in, something printed on there or embroidery printed and you can't see through the wrong side of the fabric, pin it out first on the right side and then mark where uh, the, the section lies that I want to cut and focus on. And then I can see my pins through the wrong side. Now you can mark it with your pins, you can mark it or you can just follow your pins right along with your fusible interfacing and then just fuse right in the section of your pins. And then you'll know that your item is, is centered. Now this I won't be able to see it on the wrong side so I'm going to put my pins on the right side and then once again I'll be able to mark it. But if I can see it from the wrong side of the fabric and I can just lay it right down. So I'm just marking it out with my pins so my pins will serve as my guide so I'll know where to put that fusible interfacing when I turn it to the wrong side. And just double checking that my fusible is facing the wrong side of the fabric before I set my iron on there. I'm just pin basting that fusible until I can get it to the ironing board. And once again I, I trim some of the lettering off of the embroidery and that, that's still okay with me. So now that I have all of my squares all cut out and I'm going to now um, hand applique all of my little emblems and that I got from part of the hat that I had and I'm going to applique my socks. And since I have several of each one, I'm kind of just putting them in a stack so I can kind of just see what I have as I uh, do my layout. Now this is my backing flat fabric. I'm using a snuggle fleece backing fabric in a neutral yellow. That's all I had on hand for this project. So now I'm going to lay out my design. Now I'll have six rows across and seven rows down. Eight rows down. So now all of my socks have been applicated. I'm going to just trim them off to the size of the three and a half inch square. And then I'm ready to lay out my design. And all of my seams will be sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance. With right sides facing, I will complete each row and then I will sew each row together. So I'm now just going to sew right sides together and complete each row. Now that each row has been sewn together, I'm going to press my seams open. And then I'm ready to sew each row together. So with right sides facing and making sure that my seams are matching, I'm going to sew my quarter inch seam allowance and sew all of my rows together. And then I will press those seams open. So this is what my quilt top looks like now. It's um, it's a, just a small wall hanging. At this point, if you choose, you can add um, more squares or you can add um, uh, additional borders. I'm not going to add any more borders or any more squares. So all of my appliques have been complete. All my seams pressed. 
and now it's time to put this quilt sandwich together so with my snuggle fleece I'm going to place it right side up and I'm going to do my batting my batting is a 80 20 cotton and since this is a small snuggle uh, small wall hanging I'm just going to piece some batting pieces that I had together with a zigzag stitch and then put my quilt top on on top of that and I'm going to pin baste everything together and then I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to use my walking foot and I'm just going to do a grid pattern of, or crisscross grid pattern along this small wall hanging because I don't want anything to take away from the memory quilt part. So all of those wonderful baby clothes pieces that I have there. Now on the parts that have the appliques, I won't be quilting over those. So all of my grid is all done, my crisscross along each of the squares, except for the ones that have the heavy embroidery and the ones that have the applique, the socks applique. So now it's time to trim the quilt up so that I can add the binding. So I'm just squaring up the, the whole part of the quilt. Some of the pieces did shift while quilting so just getting it all squared up and ready for the binding and I'll tell you the measurement of this wall hanging once I'm all done attaching the binding, I'll measure it out. Now it's time to attach my, to add my binding. I'm going to cut my binding strips two and a half inches. And I'm just making sure I have enough strips for the entire quilt. And now I'm going to connect these binding strips um, on a miter. I'm going to lay one strip down on the vertical and right side up and lay the next strip vertical right side down or horizontal right side down and I'm going to place it uh, corner to corner and draw a line across so that I can create an angle and that'll be my sew line so once I've sewn on that angle making sure that when I fold it up it's going to create that miter I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then you can finger press or you can press those seams open and make sure that you have your corner, your, your miter there, your miter for your join. And I will continue to do that for all of the strips until I have enough uh, binding to complete the strip, the entire quilt. And then I'll fold that binding strip in half all the way the length of the binding and get ready to attach it. So now I usually I start at the end, but since the end is so is a short end for this small quilt, I'm going to start on the side, and I'm going to start by leaving about eight to ten inch tail where I'm not going to sew. So I'll begin begin pinning about eight to ten inches, and then once I get to a corner, I'm going to stop, measure down from a corner a quarter of an inch from that corner and I'm going to stop sewing there. I'll back stitch at the beginning and at the end so that I can create that miter corner where you fold it up, 
perpendicular and then fold it back on itself to, to continue to sew. So at my start, you see where my clip is, and then I'll stop a quarter inch from the edge and continue to sew. And then I'll show you how to join these ends. So now my entire binding is attached. I'm going to show you how to connect these two edges. This is my beginning tail here. This is my end. I'm going to fold that end tail so that I can create that seam there, that fold line right at the edge of the beginning. And I'm going to mark it to make sure that it's visible. I'm going to lay it down on the horizontal and then I'm going to lay my beginning strip right in front of that marked line on the vertical. And then from the outside corner, outside right corner, I'm going to begin marking up to the outside of that corner. And that'll be my sew line. But before I do anything, I always pin baste it and then I make sure that I have it pinned right and that everything is going to uh, match up right. So now I'm going to draw my line, just like you did when you connected the joins, and sew on that line, and now it's time to trim it. So once I trim it, and then I open it up, I'm going to press that seam to one side, fold it in half again, wrong side's facing, just like you did before when you were ready to put it on the quilt. And then it should match and line up raw edges of the binding to the raw edge of the quilt, back stitch at that beginning there, back stitch at that end, and continue to connect your binding. Now your binding strip should all be connected to your quilt. It's time to fold it to the back. And now, so if you stop at that end a quarter of an inch, your miter corner should just fall right in line. I'm going to trim off those corners so that mitered edge can fold back really nicely. Fold it right back and I clip on one side of the corner first, clip on the other side of the corner, and then I'm able to bring my miter corners right in line. Fold one edge over and then clip. And then continue to fold your, miter, your binding to the back all the way around, and then you can hand hand sew this on or you can machine, machine sew it. I'm going to machine sew it and I will use a blanket stitch to sew my binding on. And you can also, after you finished with your binding, attach a label. So my Memory Baby Quilt is all done. My binding is attached. You can add a label at this point if you like. And this measures 18 and a half by 24 and a half. And um, to attach this, I use alien tape on one piece in each of the corners and it acts just like a command strip so it doesn't harm the walls if you want to ever remove this. So it's a great way to hang your quilts, even the biggest quilts I've hung using this alien tape. So I hope you like this project and I hope you give it a try. It's a great way to um, save all of those baby clothes. Thanks for watching.